welcome back to the European Championship. We've just seen Oskaka win versus Hoy, and that was Group A. But right now we're going to jump into Group B, and the next match will be Life Coach versus Nairia. Uh, I'm your host Nimshan. I'm here with Jakub Bofa Shigulski and Dan Frodan Cho uh, to, to talk about this match and what a match that will be. Oh, welcome to the desk, Lothar. How's your Thank experience you. in Prague so far? I um, mean, the event just looks amazing. The Hearthstone scene, the Heroes of the Storm scene, the WoW scene, and all that crowd that is gathering here to watch those events is just amazing. I didn't think that so much people will actually come here, you know? It's, esports is growing, and you can see that every single next event is bigger than the previous one, and yeah. that's something... Like, I'm really, really looking forward to the future of the uh, of that sport. Yeah, we're just getting started too. I think uh, this is the match that I'm looking forward to today as well. I think Life Coach vs Nairia is uh, one of the, the coolest ones, just un untitled, because both these players last year and this year are just so heavy with their ladder accomplishments and very talented players. I can't wait to see what's going to happen. And Life Coach seems to be crowd favorite because when we show the players, everybody was cheering for, for Life Coach. Uh, I think we can show the bracket right now to see what is happening and what was happening with the, with the matches that we haven't seen. So we can see Life Coach versus Nairia and uh, Jira versus Pavel. That will be up our upper bracket for Group B. And well, the winners will face each other. If you lose, you can lose once, but you can't lose twice. This is double elimination. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You can lose only one game, uh, one match, basically, and you are sure that you only will face two players. Does it give you peace of mind, Lothar, that you like coming into this tournament as a player, mm -hmm. you know that, hey, I can lose once, it's fine? I think you shouldn't think about like losing at all. You have to be focused on winning and winning only. It's, uh, it's, you always have the second chance, but that's only an emer emergency exit. So uh, most of the players are just, you know, the type of player that only wants to win. And when I was talking with Life Coach before this, uh, this game, he's always in his zone, you know? And he's always trying to just ease his mind, just eat one hour before the match, drink one hour before the match, completely shut down everything that can disrupt his, uh, his mind, just be completely focused on the game. And that's something not every single player does. And I think many of those um, pro players have to adapt into that mindset if they want to be successful, you know? Talking about ad uh, adaptation, is uh, Life Coach is not bringing Warlock. Frodo, what do you think about that? He is bringing Hunter instead. Yeah, I like that. I think Hunter is underrated. I think it's pretty decent. I don't think it's the best deck. And I think that's okay. So I, I, I like the ability for the Hunters to get powerful wins. And in the pocket of the metagame, it's pretty decent against the most popular classes. If everyone's bringing Handlock, if everyone's bringing Druid, and, and honestly, it's fine against Patient Warriors sometimes. Mm -hmm. Hunter's not bad. In fact, yep. it might even be good. And everyone's like, no, we thought he was gone. It's like, nah. But yeah, that's the mid-range Hunter and not the face Hunter. Correct. Either. Sorry, yeah. We have to specify that there are different ways to build Hunter. Um, there's the, the fa they're very fast, aggressive Hunter. There's the hybrid Hunter, where you kind of go between the mid-range and the aggressive. And there's the slow version of Hunter, which explodes for damage as the game goes on. You've also yeah. mentioned the most popular decks right now, Druid, uh, Handlock, and Patron as well. And it seems like Nairia is bringing something, something like that, exactly. Oh, yeah, for sure. Nairia has a lineup that has Warlock, Druid, Warrior, like you said. And that is probably the go-to lineup if you want to be a very standard player. But Nairia is also one of those players where if I look at Warlock, uh, I don't think it's necessarily guaranteed to be Handlock. He's a player that innovated the Mali Ghost Warlock a lot. Actually, he, it was him that started the trend in the beginning. People were like, well, I want to play Mali Ghost. What deck should I stick it in? He was the guy putting it in Warlock on top of winning it in tournaments. One interesting aspect is the fact that players did know who they will face mm -hmm. before the, the, the deck submission, so they could have adapt the playstyle, their lineups against a specific opponent. And Life sure. Coach is being known for playing Handlock almost every single time. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised if Naria brings a Dragon Handlock, a Dragon um, Malgos uh, Warlock, as you said, with two big game hunters just to battle against that Handlock. And we know now that Life Coach is not bringing right. at, the, at all, right? In the qualifier, Nairia was playing a standard handlock. It wasn't even a demon handlock. Mm -hmm. Do you think he maybe changed his gears and like he is bringing the Malagos? Or maybe he's playing demon uh, handlock instead? I think it's a, it's a different kind of beast when you prepare for a qualifier and when you prepare for a specific opponent, because you have to adapt. And that's something that pro players, of course, should do and always are preparing a lot for every single event. So I wouldn't be surprised, as I said before, that Nairia will bring something very specific 
to battle in the, against those three specific opponents in his group, but at the same time, it can backfire really heavily. So you win versus life coach, but then you have trouble versus other opponents who brought different lineups. In exam. And we talked about Warrior a bit. Uh, Frodan, do you expect anything else than Patron from those players? Well, I mean, there's always a possibility that Nyria plays a different type of Warrior. Um, huh. <laughs> there is. For example, um, I mean, as much as Patron Warrior is very dominant, and Nyria is also piloting a very cool type of mid-range Warrior that people weren't really expecting with some of your favorite cars, like Varian Ren, for example. Uh, he was putting this mid-range warrior out on ladder, and I think he some went something absurd, like 32 wins and four losses, uh, on top of climbing very, very high. So he's, he's one of those players, um, people compared Nyria to Kalento, not only because they're both from Ukraine and very good at Hearthstone, but because both of them are not afraid to pilot any deck that they can to the top ends of Legend. Like, literally, I feel like Nyria is one of those players who can just do whatever he wants, build a really cool deck, and get number one. That's just kind of his style. Yeah. We talk a lot about those players. Let's hear those players actually talking about themselves. I actually don't even think it's too important like whom I play, but it's rather important what they play. I'm Adrian Koi, life coach in the team G2. I've been playing like um, being top 8 of the whole ladder system. I will try to do with my best. I know him also for quite a while now. He's one of the very strongest ladder players and he also proved this this year. Slightly missing like the top eight of the ladder, but he plays like nine to 161 points or something. Extremely strong ladder player. Those decks he is actually focused on. I think he is extremely good with. But um, if everything comes together, I really hope that I will be able to um, qualify for BlizzCon. I'm Naria. My name is Evgeny Shumilin. I'm from Ukraine, and I'm playing for Team Liquid. I played a lot of on ladder, I got tons of points. Actually, I didn't make top 8. I got a chance to face this 8th player. My team is great. My opponent is Life Coach. I know him pretty well, I watch his streams. He's pretty educational. He's a very predictable player, but it doesn't mean anything when it comes into play. My strengths that I'm playing a little bit different from the other people sometimes. I can see plays that usually nobody sees, but also weakness that I can overthink something. I think uh, it's all about staying focused. Last year I lost in the group, so I would be pretty happy. <laughs> if I go through this factor, I can make it through very easy. Both players made it to the last qualifier last year, and they didn't make it to the World Championships at BlizzCon. This is a very important match for them. Who do you guys think is uh, in a better position here? I, have, um, I think that Naria is still in a point when he has to prove himself. And Life Coach doesn't necessarily is in that point. He won a lot of tournaments and has a lot of titles in his, in his pocket, when Naria still is grasping for that final title to get something really going on and this might be a factor that will affect his you know mindset and his um capability to be really nervous here and we'll see how it goes during the games but i hope this will not be yeah. something decisive life coach quite the showman just giving a hi to the audience there's a lot of love for the, for the life coach I mean, because he has a lot he, of people here. He's very charismatic. I mean, it's one of those things where I spend 10 minutes with Life Coach, and I already feel inspired to be a better person. You know, he owns his own <laughs> company in the UK. He has a family of two children. He's won God knows how much money by now, almost six digits of Hearthstone prize money. Uh, he's extremely successful. He's also really good looking, and he has a beautiful family. Like, I'm entirely jealous right now of his entire life. Are you rooting for Life Coach, or are you rooting for Nyria then? Uh, actually, I'm rooting for Nyria. Even though I want Life Coach to continue to succeed, one of the things that hurts me the most is that I feel like Nyria is actually one of the unluckiest players I've ever seen. This All is right. kind of a weird thing to say, but the game's about to start. Thank you very much, Nims, for that great introduction. We're going to start off with Druid versus Druid here. And we've seen this matchup earlier. It was extremely one-sided based off of one player being able to get the Emperor Thorson now in a big hand, but that might change. Neither player looks like they have that early game ramp right now. Yeah, that's, that's something that always you want to have as a Druid player, because the Druid class is defined by the factor of 
chilling out of the mana curve. So cards like Wild Grove, Dynasty's Aspirant, Innervate, and End Pearl Forest, and as you said, which was the decisive factor last game, last match, sure. is something you want to have in your opening hand. That's right. Now, before we get too far into it, I said that, you know, I, I, I don't really foresee this match being very one-sided. I think it's going to be very close. Mm -hmm. But you're, you're leaning over to the life coach camp, right, Luthar? Well, you know, it's kind of natural for me, mm -hmm. but I'm, I try to be as li a little biased as I can, so... Fair uh, enough, fair enough. I do want to explain that when I say I feel like Nairi is one of the unluckiest players, that every time on stream, I feel like he plays very well, but things just don't go his way. And when it happens that often, it always feels like, ah, you know, like, when, when's it going to be his time? Whenever I see him perform in DreamHacks or mm -hmm. last year's EU championships where he, he was seated number two right behind Clenso, but he got eliminated very early on despite his uh, you know, playing, I think, better than his opponents. So I think it's almost time for Nairi to have a breakout performance. I think it's, it's, it's overdue. We'll see how it goes. But for now, both players have double swipes, which is a great card in general, but not maybe the best one in this particular matchup. Right. Yeah, a swipe is really good for clearing a lot of small minions plus one big target, and you can usually set it up very effectively. But against Druid vs. Druid, it often just clears one minion, and not even entirely. Like, kills half a Shredder. It almost kills a, an Emperor Thorson. Exactly, and uh, the problem that the Druid class has in general in matchups like that is the fact that they have to deal the damage Themselves, there's no removal, there's no hard removal like, uh, let's say, Twisting Nether or Siphon Salt. Hard that. removal like Twisting Nether! All right, Lothar, you're trolling me. Well, you know, I would <laughs> really love to see this card in this tournament, you know? Yeah, yeah, It's sure. so beautiful. But in this situation, every single druid has to deal the damage by cards like Swipe, by attacking with a minion, by mm -hmm. graphing, by using Keeper of the Grove, or just using his hero power. Sure. And that's usually really a lot of damage that you have to deal. Let's say there's an Ancient of War, on the board. How do you deal that damage to that? Well, it's a very good question. Uh, I mean, maybe the Ancient War you silence it, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. In the meantime, we had no ramp on either side for mm -hmm. two, two and a half turns here, but I thought maybe the third turn would have been the same outside of Nairia picking up that Innervate. But however, he still has the opportunity to play a Shade here and use that Innervate later on. Shade is uh, something that you want to consider it gets really weak the later the game goes on. Because ultimately, if it only needs one turn to set up, it's a 3-3, so the earlier you get it down, the better. Yeah, that's very true. And you, most of the time, you want to use it as a trade tool. So let's say your opponent plays a Druid of the Claw in Taunt mode, and your Shade was able to be a few turns on the board, and it grows to a 6-6, so you can no just trade instantly into the Druid of the Claw, still remain on the board, and has to be uh, and you push, push your opponent to use additional card to finish it off. In this situation, this is a very interesting uh, thing, maybe not everyone knows that, but the death rattles from minions on board are being triggered by, with the order they're being played on the board. So in this situation, Palta Treader will be triggering first from the death rattle and the Sylvanas after uh, the Palta Treader. So making a trade with the Sylvanas will result in getting the minion from the Palta Treader. Yeah, something that Lechers doesn't have to worry about right now, but it does end up being the case, uh, it make it really awkward. If you silence the Sylvanas, none of the effects change. Or sorry, you change the effect, but the fact is the 5-5 five, five body is still the most powerful minion. So, uh, very big Innervate turn for Nyria, but ultimately Life Coach, uh, he's going to have that response to Sylvanas. The only thing that he gives up, though, is he's floating a Mana Crystal, and unfortunately his stats are just much weaker overall. Yeah, he's looking weaker than Nairia on the board, and he doesn't have the tools to necessarily make a comeback if he loses another turn of, you know, putting lesser bodies on, on board. And Nairia is looking great with the curve he has, especially with now the Keeper of the Grove to silence the Palta Shredder if he wants to. But I think Keepers in this matchup might be very valuable for targets, like you said, Ancient of War, for example, or the Sylvanas, as we just saw from Nairia, right? It's a pretty beefy board. <laughs> Having a hard time imagining Life Coach can can weather the storm in time because the whole point is you can stabilize in Druid versus Druid, but ha have you taken too much damage? Like, is it too late for you to stabilize because uh, you're you're at low health and he just kills you? So Life Coach really has to find a way from this point on to make sure that he can control the board without taking too much damage. That's going to require him to do things like swipe, but even then, swipe doesn't fully clear the board here. Well, he can clear two creatures with the swipe and hero power, so that's one option. 
and I think he, that's the best option this turn. Mm -hmm. uh, but as you said, uh, maybe we should explain why you usually die when you take two damage, damage against the uh, com uh, against the droid, because there's a combo looming on turn nine, which deals fourteen damage just by playing two cards, Force of Nature and Savage Roar. So this is usually the the mark you're not happy going like going through that line, yeah. right? Yeah, you generally don't want to dip below 15 health. That's that's generally the rule of thumb. If you're about halfway dead, you're you're dead. That's kind of the <laughs> druid rule of thumb here. Uh, Life coach here, just trying to evaluate like if he should wild growth, and he chooses to do so wow. because maybe he wants to get closer to a comeback through things like Azure Swipe, and also it opens up his mana for eight next turn, giving him much more plays. Mm -hmm. Versus seven next turn, that's actually very restrictive. He's only forced to play Shade plus something else. This also might show your opponent that maybe I'm coming to that combo. No, I want that 10-9, that 9 mana crystals yeah. as soon as possible. Yeah, that wasn't a very obvious play. And Narian now has to really evaluate, like, does he go for the normal Ancient of Lore, like, press in with the thumb? Uh, do I want to silence the Shredder and control the board? Mm -hmm. uh, do I want to just develop Azure Drake and take it slow? I, I still think Ancient of Lore, generally speaking, is the most powerful play. But I wonder what he's thinking, too. He didn't use the Keeper of the Grove before, and I think he values that a lot. Because yeah. he's missing... Let's imagine like one year ago, almost every single Druid was playing Black Knight, Black Knight because sure. of yeah. Ancient of Wars. And now, there's no answer to that. No one is going back to that card. So the Keeper of the right. Grove might be very valuable, and I wouldn't be surprised if it just goes for the Ancient of Grove. But <laughs> Maybe a little I know. No, I mean, I think Ancient of Lord here still is a very powerful play. I think if you want to get really creative, you like heal minions so you can press for damage, but I, I think it's unnecessary. Druid still mm -hmm. has a hard time to deal with it. His opponent would have to specifically have an Azure Drake into an Innervate and Swipe to just stabilize, not even to just be winning convincingly. Yep. That's a really tough turn for Life Coach. Dr. Boom a little too late. I mean, his... I mean, exactly on time, because it will be normally uh, yeah, seven, right. seven mana turn, Without right? that wild Without growth, it would be a seven mana. Yeah, but at the same time, you're, <laughs> you're facing 14 attack points just with three minions. Mm -hmm. And you have no easy way of clearing those minions. Yeah. I think, well, if Life Coach picked up Innervate, it would have been fantastic. However, now he can still clear two minions with Swipe and play a Pilot Shredder, giving him a way to contest the Ancient of Lore. Mm -hmm. Not to mention, you still have a minion on board because Pilot Shredder drops a two-mana minion after it dies. Yes. It is random, though, so you're not really exactly in control all the time. But, we, you know, that's something that you can't really account <laughs> for when you're, when you're the one trading. Of course. So, I feel like that might be his best course of action. And you stop taking damage is the priority. It's very interesting. Because I was thinking that maybe you want to set up... Nah, never mind. It's too much damage. <laughs> you, you can't really afford to... Oh, you were thinking absorbing here some yes. of the minions. That's, that's ambitious, I think. If you, it's like you said, you don't want to take too much damage. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, can you not play aggressively at this point? It depends, though. Like, his hand is um, not even very defensive. Like. What, which minions in his hand stops damage from coming at him? Almost not. No, that's not what I'm saying. There's no option to... Oh, oh, okay. There's no option to get back unless you press enough, right? True that. Iria gonna press in the aggression, choosing to silence now, so that way he can posh himself for lethal. He has two swipes next turn, so most likely he should be able to press in for the damage. Mm -hmm. And that was a very, really, very quick turn, and mm -hmm. Iria... I'm sure that Life Coach right. was aware that the card that uh, Nerea was thinking of two turns before was the, the same card as the, was the Keeper right now. Right. So he knows that he, there's a plan for turn eight. And most likely, because it was played so fast, yep. it will be double swipe or maybe like a Druid of the Clove Savage Roll, something like that, to finish him off. Right, so Life Coach feels like he might just die next turn, and he has to figure out what's his best outs. He's used two swipes, though, so Azure Drake can't yank He needs the his wrath. wrath. Oh, mm. it's for two mana, and it's kind of green, but that's not it. <laughs> well, I guess uh, by proximity is not good enough here. Life Coach can't even kill off this board, and that's going to wrap it up. I mean, can. he can hear power twice. Yes. He can kill Keeper of the Grove or just the Ancient of Law who's taking 10 damage to the face, which is not ideal. Yeah, it's not bad. I mean, he fills out his mana curve. This is kind of what the hero power inspire mechanic was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. uh, however, that is exact lethal with two swipes, and that's going to wrap up game number one. Nyria gets off to a quick start. Quick win for Nyria, and he secures his druid. Yeah, this is really big, too, because 
The fact is the, the lineups are generally pretty similar, which means if you can get an edge in mirror matchups, you have an overall pretty sharp advantage because you can get more advantageous stuff. Aria playing very solidly too, really like following his curve and just finding opportunities to be aggressive versus defensive. Um, you know, like he, he, the timing on his uh, on his keeper of the group, I think, was actually very good. Yeah, that's true. He was just set up, set, setting up for Lifo without needing to go uh, like through hit, through a taunt. Maybe. Yep. So that was very very clever to do. And now when Aria secures the druid, I was just thinking. Does the Druid affect like the lineups from the players? Because um, Druid versus Druid, of course, are coin toss, because most of them are very similar to each mm -hmm. other, and it depends heavily on the um, mana acceleration. Then there's Druid versus Hunter, which wouldn't be have that would be a hard time for the Druid, right? Usually, generally speaking, yes. Although we've seen Druids, you know, take it a good amount of time. In fact, Monk would be one of the first <laughs> people to probably disagree with you, right? Of like, no, like, uh, you know, based off my statistics, Druid's good against Hunter. Which, you know, it depends on the feel and the build of each player. So, generally speaking, you can't always say for sure Hunter's like favorite against Druid all the time. But generally speaking, most of the time, yeah. Yep, but now life coach has well he doesn't have to switch. But I will figure out. Uh, I will think that he will switch that different deck right now. Maybe hunter because that should be still good against warrior and warlock. I'm sure. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a Harrison Jones in the hunter deck in the current meta game. Maybe it's being tweaked against patrons. Oh, you're saying life coach would run the Harrison Jones in the Hunter deck. Oh, yes. that's very interesting, in my opinion. We have saw that many times in the past, and I think maybe that's that's the, that's new timeline mark to use that again in the Hunter deck, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if Lepkut will just sit back uh, and play with the Druid again, because there's a Warlock, which might be not the best matchup for, uh, for against the Druid, and the Warrior it can be still kind of too slow, unless there's a patron in 5 of Inner Rage coin, Whirlwind or something else, ridiculous like that. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, Nairia, uh, his road to BlizzCon, getting to this point, has also been primarily through ladder points. Mm -hmm. Looks as we go in and see Warrior versus Druid here, uh, game number two. Nairia, he, he climbed also both in NA and EU. In fact, uh, his pinnacle achievement, in my opinion, was in May, where he got both top 20 on both servers simultaneously. That's very hard to do. In fact, he had in top 10 in NA, and then number 13 in EU. That's very impressive. That's Extremely very impressive. impressive. Because most of the time you have to do it on the same day. Yep. Because these seasons are ending on the same day on both right. servers, and there's like only a few hours of difference. So if you want to be on the t in the top 20, top 10, or even top 50 of a ladder, you have to be present at the last few hours of the ladder. That's right. And the last six I want to drop here is now, out of all the players uh, in Europe who have had the longest streaks being in the top 100 of ladder, Nairia is ranked third with seven months in a row wow. landing in the top 100. That's very impressive. That's, that's, very that's consistency consistent. at its finest. Yeah. Uh, but there is one player here who is more consistent, but I'll talk about him when, when he shows up. I kind of want to save the best for later. Of course. All right, so Life Coach didn't have ramp early on last game, but this time he's got multiple he's got ways. Yep. He's, uh, he got the inner red and the wild grove, and doesn't look bad, but at the same time, his ref and Savador are cards that you don't necessarily want in your opening hand against Warrior, because right. most of the time the Savador is just a finishing move, mm -hmm. a finishing touch to, for, for the game, and the ref is one of the great ways to deal with a patron or Warzone commander already yeah. on board. So those are very reactive cards you want to keep until late game, maybe mid game, and what you're looking now in the early game is a shade of an extra as sure. it's really tough to deal. Uh, the, the, uh, the world has a tough time dealing with it. All just pile the shredders, Druid of the Claws. You hit the nail on the head, Lothar. Basically, as Druid, you want to be playing minions, not waiting for your opponent to play minions. Exactly. And that's oh. where Savage War number two is not exactly the most helpful. However, Wild Growth gives him four mana next turn, mm -hmm. and with the intervene the coin, allows him to play Ancient of Lore, and that's really powerful for turn three play. Exactly, because there's also really hard time, uh, yeah. hard time for Maria to deal with that, because there will be a. Oh, that's Stop peculiar. Me. Stop me! <laughs> what? what? We have okay. to talk about this. So, 
Warzone Commander is supposed to be fundamental to how you interact with this deck. It's supposed to be yeah. giving minions like Patron, the Farthing Berserker Charge, and the Unstable Ghoul. He just played that in turn three. What's going on, Lothar? I'm not exactly sure because usually how you play this matchup, uh, is you have two ways. You win by playing Patrons on board. You don't need Warzone Commanders for that because mm -hmm. we are all aware how big of a deal for the Druid is to kill those Patrons, right? It's to clear the board. And the second win condition is just playing of a big Frothing Berserker, but with charge. And you need that Warzone Commander for that. So this is a clear tempo move just for Neria to like boggle the mind. Yeah. Well, well I, I mean, coach. look at Life Coach right now. <laughs> he is boggled. Yeah. His letters are scrambled in there, and he's searching for a response. He oh, no. just doesn't care. He's going to go for Ancient of Lore. He has to, to be honest. It, it's true, because his hand's not looking very good, and I think he can't afford to fall too far behind mm -hmm. on board. So I like this reaction. He's not going to blink. And you know what? It was an entire bluff on Nyria's end, because he doesn't actually have a minion to follow it up with charge. <laughs> he's got Despite, which is what he wanted to do anyways, right? Yes. He wanted his opponent to remove, and if he didn't have a minion to play, he would death spite. Uh, whatever small minion would come out, or the face, and then set up for a Grim Patron. Exactly. I really like this clever move from Nyria. It was a total bait, but Life Coach didn't blink because he only had one play anyways. Too bad for him. <laughs> yeah, right? Well, I mean, he did have another play. He could have removed... And you know what? Nyria's not setting up the Death Spite because he doesn't actually have ways to combo more than just two patrons. He wants to get that inner rage. And he doesn't want well. to be weak against Harrison Jones in this situation because mm -hmm. you're like being one turn behind then, and you just use the Execute. Ooh, that looks interesting. Very interesting. So now he can Darnassus Aspirin and Wrath. Actually, it will get removed though. I was thinking about setting up for Boom next turn, mm -hmm. but of course. <laughs> you know, it's 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 not it's not going to be. It's like too optimistic to think that the Darnassus Aspirin will survive, right? It is, but at the same time, you're pushing your opponent to use a weapon, and right. if you want to bait him out, that's like the best way. True. But in this situation, Life Coach doesn't necessarily want to see a weapon, right? Yeah, it's too threatening. However, he did use one execute. Uh, so if you set up for a big minion, he is less likely to be able to deal with it. Like, how do you deal with Dr. Boom if you use your execute? There's, sorry to interrupt you, but there's one problem also. Like, there can be a, just a patron this turn. Imagine there will be an inner rage also. If he would, like, let, let the Warzone Commander live and play, like, a Palter Shutter, an example. Right, right. right no, I, I definitely like the Darnassus Assassin setting for Dr. Boom. However, I do think it's slightly wishful thinking. Yeah, kinda. All right, so Nyria sets up the uh, the only reasonable response. Don't let your opponent play into seven mana. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, druids have only one mana, or sorry, one minion on six mana. It's the Emperor Thorson. And even then, some druids have opted to cut it. Well, maybe Sylvanas. Oh, you're right, right. Sylvanas. So oh, I, I completely but... lied. I was testing you, Lothar, and you passed. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. You want a cookie? Thank you. Thank you. I like uh, cookies. They're good. But the um, so, so Life Coach here, mm -hmm. he, he's kind of wondering what's the best minion. Um, sh there is merit to Shade of Next Rams. So it doesn't die to a Death Spite compared to the Pilot Shredder. And Pilot Shredder could be a liability for whatever it drops. It also prevents the opponent from getting damage from Battle Rage. So he's at yes. 30 HP right now. But would you play in Shade of Next Rams into turn 6 when your opponent has Death Spite up and there's a perfect setup for, for Patron, Attack, Whirlwind? Good point. Good point. I don't think that's something you want to do, so I wouldn't be surprised if just Life Coach drops the Pile to Shredder here, Power Ups, and yeah. that's it. I agree. I think uh, th uh, when you put it that way, I think it's a really good explanation. You just have to always explore. Oh, never mind. But, I mean, you know what? The thing about the Shade Next Ram is, is if it denies the Battle Rage, because I, I don't anticipate Life Coach attacking here. Yeah. If it's more good important. Prediction. And look, hey, look what comes <laughs> in the end. He plays around Battle Rage exactly the way it is, but. If it ended up working with Double Whirlwind killed the Shade, he would have been really sad. Because if he played like if he plays Acolyte and like attacks and draws a second Whirlwind, like that's the kind of scenario where you're like, oh my goodness, I just wish I played Pilot Shredder instead. Yeah, definitely. But I, I think both players are really, really playing well against each other. Right? It's like reading the mind of each other and yeah. like baiting out the cards. This is so scenarios. nuanced. Yeah. Like, if you think about it, this entire game could have gone an unparalleled universe of what could have happened, right? Yes, definitely. Because yeah. of so many play arounds. Oh my goodness. Harrison Jones is a huge draw. It allows you to disarm the weapon. But is it important to kill the first one right now? Or do you want to save for the second one? Because the second one, I feel like, is more crushing. It is, but the second one might not even appear in the game. Would you True risk that? that? 
Um, well, considering the alternative is playing Dr. Boom, mm -hmm. I would say so. Because the problem is, not only is Harrison a weaker play on the board, but mm -hmm. this is the best time to play Dr. Boom before your opponent yes. uh, can take advantage of the 1-1 one, one boom bots or do other kind of stuff with like big charge and damage. Right, with Wilson awesome Commander and Page. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I think Dr. Boom overall is just the better play on board. And Harrison does still have value as the game goes on. That's very true, but the... I think like life code might be might be digging into a prediction that Naria doesn't necessarily have anything that is close to a patron of Rolling Berserk in his hand. True. That also is a possibility. So and and Harrison is still along the lines of like, well, I'm gonna make sure he doesn't get battle rage yes. value, you know? That's also true. Okay, fair enough. But Dr. Boom is like almost too good to pass up sometimes. And Iria picks up more card draw, which is very effective. Yes, but we also forgot about the fact that Naria used one execute. That's right. We talked about this earlier, too. Mm -hmm. The fact that uh, the getting Dr. Boom out earlier with an execute already used makes it much more likely for it to be huge damage. And also, uh, Life Coach has two damage for it. We forgot about that, too. <laughs> all right, so now that we've exhausted damage. all of Life Coach's options here, Naria has so many things he could be doing here. And I think this is the turn when you have to kind of play your chances with the boom bots, right? So you want uh, them to hit. I never feel very good about it, to be honest. Well, he goes for it. Yeah, so he's going to try to kill off boom here, and hopefully his, the patrons get copied but not killed. And this could be a big moment. This is a big moment, definitely. No, First not hit. impactful. Oh, Four damage onto bad. it. That's not bad. Yeah, gives him two cards with the battle rage. And he draws into execute, so that's going to be very useful for whatever big top minion or big minion that comes out from this point onwards. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's a good pickup because now he's able to dish out 14 damage just from hand without any kind of cards in the board. But at the same time, we know that most of the European players, when it comes to patron players, are not using Brawl. So that Shadow of Nextramas has a lot of value, oh, a you're lot right. of potential damage. You're right. I was thinking about whether or not he reveals Shade this turn, but you're, I think you're right. Like, keeping it tucked away and just being a threat for additional 6 to 10 damage, depends on how long the turns go, mm -hmm. is huge. I just think this turn is perfect for swiping the Patron and, then playing and just playing Pile to Shredder. Because you set up a lot of potential damage, Nixon. That's yeah. really insane amount That's of That's 27. Damage. And yep. your opponent's at 29. I mean, you're still not there yet, but... A couple turns from now, you might be. Not to mention that Nyria might easily just set up another weapon and Harrison Jones comes down. And that's where it's going to be very complicated because Nyria needs to be able to set up the Death Spite in anticipation for Whirlwind Synergy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he's now drawing the Inner Rage. One turn too late for those yeah, patrons. That would be really crucial. That would have been so big. Swipe would have been way less effective. Oh, that's a bad drop, though. The 1-1 one, one for Life Coach, he was really hoping for something more sturdy so he can survive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And deal damage with the Savage Roar. Like, more damage with the Savage Yeah. Roar. But yeah, but it's not terrible at the same time. Well, let's see here, so... This uh, has to be turned with Taurus and Jones, right? This is the second Death Spite. This is the second Death Spite, but you... Yeah, you give him two draws with the Acolyte, but the second Death Spite is such a big deal because there's no more copies in the deck, and this Whirlwind effect is such a big impact. What about Savage Roar and Harrison Jones? Use Savage Roar first, kill the Acolyte, deal 7 damage Ooh. to the face, and then play Harrison Jones. You set up a really like cool uh, board because you have, you have the board control. You have two minions, both are damaged, but there's only one execute left in the Warriors deck. And that means Neria had only three or four card rolls, if I'm mistaken, to get that execute, to get that second execute. And uh, you know there's no second death spot, so you're, uh, you're only weak to a fear War X. He also picked up Emperor Thorson. That's 22 damage plus the shade that survives next turn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shade goes to 6 damage plus 10, so it'd be 32 damage. I like going for Emperor Thorson when I look at this and evaluate, because that is a big whopping amount that's guaranteed next turn, unless Nyria is able to gain a lot of life and kill off every minion. And that's hard to do when there's a shade of next time. Whoops, stuff. Oh, look at that. Second Grim Patron. So the Harrison Jones will be awkward for the next couple turns, if there will be couple turns. I mean, this is his last death fight too, so he has to make sure the timing is very key. But we also have to acknowledge the fact that uh, 
This Emperor Thorson can die, but if Nairia takes damage, like he swings at the patron, no, he's he dead. No, no, he will just use double Wilwins and the Acolyte to finish off the Emperor. No, no, but he, he's going to die to a double Savage or combo next turn mm -hmm. if he takes too much damage here. But you can't anticipate that. You can't right, really you play can't. around Savage Roar, I mean double Savage Roar with Force of Nature. This is just too much. That's it. Right here, like, Nairia is going to try to go for an opportunity to clone the patrons, and this is his win condition. Not only is he doing this, but he's also drawing a lot of cards and putting on significant pressure. Mm -hmm. Unless he has a zero mana brawl. That's true. Zero mana brawl would be pretty effective, uh, but that's not going to matter. And despite the fact that Patron Warrior is supposed to be pretty good against Druid, some people even say a hard counter, Life Coach is going to whop his opponent for 32 damage this turn. Just a whoop -a. With yeah, a lot of them. There's a lot of you know kung fu old school like <laughs> sound effects like <laughs> and the fake mustache, you know from paper. And if it wasn't enough, Life Coach drew inner vein, so he could have done it anyways this turn. Yeah, that's hilarious actually. That's well, a lot of damage, and this series just got tied up with a huge woo! wombo combo from Life Coach. It's clap for for the crowd. You, you you actually have to hear that, right? The crowd is going insane here. Yeah, Life Coach, a little bit of hesitation there, but it's not the thing too much. Nyria, you know, you can't really play around that. Although, no, you, you do have to evaluate, like, mm, what does my opponent have, like, you know, reasonably. If he had one combo, he would have survived. But if he had two Savage Roars, no, there's no chance he would have lived. Oh, there's two Force of Natures and two uh, Savage Roars. That's, That's right. It. Not I to it. mention that based off the hand that he was able to continue to draw into, mm -hmm. there was a likelihood that maybe he would have killed Life Coach. Maybe. So, or just armor up so much, it would be out of range. Right. But I mean, that's such a second. board dominant position with a lot of patrons, more card draw, mm -hmm. a Frothing Berserker in hand, yeah. another Whirlwind. And, and the second Warson Commander, too. Yep. So he had right. the possibility just to dish out a lot of damage himself. We just got information, by the way, that Tice was able to uh, defeat Maverick in oh, wow. the first round as well. That's happening on the secondary stream. We do realize there's a lot of games. We can't feature everybody. I hope you guys can go ahead and check it out. All the results are posted, of course, at EURTB2015.com. Make sure to check, check that it out. out. Uh, in the meantime, game number three is a tied series, but this is kind of what I was expecting. Uh, both Druids are out of the way, which <laughs> means we have Hunter and Warrior versus the Warlock and Warrior remaining. By the way, about the Druid, it's very interesting that there was a point in meta game when the Druid was falling out, and now he's back, like full-blown back into the meta game. Yeah, he's winning fact, everything. One of the best decks. Yeah, exactly. It's very fascinating that something so subtle but very powerful can just put Druid back on the map, but on top, right? Darnassus yeah, Astrid Darnassus is really Astrid. good. We've seen some cards like the Savage Combatant also be worked mm -hmm. into the, some of the Druid decks, and that's, it, it's a slow transition. We've even seen uh, some people take out the Emperor Thorson and put other things in too, so I'm, I'm really liking some of the creativity that Druids can show, but also, uh, you know, it, it's, I do hope that it can continue to evolve, because sometimes it feels like Druid's a little too dependent on it, and then we see Hoy with two Savage Wars, two Force of Nature. Yeah, well, Druid is one-dimensional when it comes to the play style, for now at least because it's always about the mo the burst oh, finish right burst finish and having more mana than your opponent that's it right oh fair enough i mean there are some small nuances to playing druid that gives it some flavor especially if you're playing it's a very aggressive deck uh but that mm -hmm. that's going to change because we don't have any more druids uh we only have hunters warriors and warlocks remaining now the big question in my book is what warlock does nyria have or is he going to even play warlock right now he comes in here as uh, one of the top eight seeds with a lot of points in. In fact, um, being able to see Nairia's accomplishments is just really astounding because he's had such a longevity to his ladder accomplishments. Like last year, he qualified primarily through ladder as well because mm -hmm. Kalento uh, was able to get number one seed, but Nairia's number two seed. So that's two years in a row that Nairia is like top eight in points, but very high up in there. Yeah, that's very true. And, uh... I was just talking before, now he is hungry for blood here. He's, he's thirsty for blood. He wants to win this game, so I wouldn't be surprised if he goes really tough on Life Coach right now. That's right. Meanwhile, Life Coach, on the other hand, uh, we were talking about Nyria had seven months in the top 100. Life Coach is ranked just under him with six months. Mm -hmm. And of course, Life Coach even mentioned it in his uh, interview segment that he was not really always focused on ladder, but whenever he did, he did very well. In January and March, he both placed practically top 10. Uh, and then, of course, he was able to win things like the Viagame House Cup number 
number three. He was getting, you know, top. Uh, and that gave him 100 points. Yeah, he got into the semifinals with like the Deck Masters. He placed top eight in a bunch of tournaments like Assembly, the Legendary Series, Katowice. Uh, very accomplished 2015. In fact, people were always talking about Life Coach last year. Mm -hmm. And he didn't get very much deserved attention, but at DreamHack Winter last year, that was the turning point. He started performing very well at every tournament he appeared in. And from that point on, now everyone's associating Life Coach as one of the best players in the world. Yeah, he just needed the push, the final push for that. All right, game number three, we have Warrior Mirrors. And if you uh, are a fan of armor up passing, I've got some good news for you. There's going to be a lot of armoring up this turn, or this game, excuse me. So uh, coming into the early game here, the thing about patrons versus patrons is that you want to make sure that if you can get board control, you can. But at the same time, you don't want to overextend too far onto the board. Uh, there are opportunities for your opponent to reverse kill you, but it's mm -hmm. also not as common as you think. So there's a lot of like dancing back and forth between these two players in two, two matchups. Usually the player who plays first, the patrons, is winning the matchup, right? Right, but that, that was like the old school way to think too. There's like ways for you to play very defensive. Mm -hmm. um, and this is also the case when players are not bringing Brawl into their, their decks, because that's one of the uh, cards that changes the whole uh, dimension of the matchup. It can just turn around the, the board in, the, in your favor. Because usually, an example, one of the play, uh, patron players is just Overflowing the board with patrons, maybe with a Warzone Commander at the same time. Sure. And you can easily kill one of the win conditions uh, by just one card, by playing one card. But it's very... I wouldn't say it's likely, but maybe the European players uh, were inspired by the NA scene. Because everyone in NA, and I'm sure you're familiar oh, with that... Are you acknowledging the North American scene, Lothar? Kinda, you know. I was really surprised that everyone from the NA scene was bringing Brawl in patron decks. Yes. And that was a very cool, very cool addition because at the same time, handlocks were so dominant in the in the metagame too. So having Brawl against two decks, handlocks and patrons, was a very cool move. And I'm just wondering how much inspirational of inspiration was that right. for the European players? I think card draw is also very fundamental to how this deck actually plans out. Life Coach chooses not to use the inner rage. He has the patron in hand, so he recognizes Hey, you know, if I pick up that death spy next turn, turn five, I'm just going to go off and try to see if I can grab that early win. Yeah, but Naria has that also. And this might be problematic for Life Coach. He sees the death spy on turn three, so he knows that he still has at least one turn mm -hmm. and before the patrons will be spawned. And coining out that death spy may also uh, be a sign that your opponent doesn't have the patron at all. That's true. Um, he still has to wait two turns for it, like you said. But Nairia does have the combination. It's usually the Grim Patron and the Inner Rage, and mm -hmm. then you copy two of those and have four on the board. You usually can deal with two, but the problem is that more keep coming. And, you know, Warrior's removal is very singular. You know, you can target one thing at a time, unless you want a Whirlwind clear, but that's not very effective against Grim Patron at all. Yeah, that's practically the opposite. <laughs> yes. So that said, Life Coach just uses one Battle Rage here, picks up an Unstable Ghoul, very weak. However, that does set up for the Grim Patron on the following turns. Yes, it does. I, I think he will go for the Unstable Ghoul because his, his hand is really slow. And I just think he, he needs to take the initi initiative here because he knows that his Patrons will be coming first. That was already coin played. If he goes for the, turn, uh, for the Unstable Ghoul now, he will definitely go for Patriots on Tin Fire. Oh, second, second Battle Rage, Rage instead. And that's pretty painful. Battle Rage is one of your main engines to draw, mm -hmm. and to use it on one card cycle feels like Life Coach is going to be very far behind the resource count. Wow! Big that's Game interesting. Hunter. So he's anticipating a lot of handlock. Yeah, that's the, true. The Big Game Hunter is a throwback card because I know players like Zelay from North America. Uh, he liked to put it back in the day, but we haven't mm -hmm. seen that card very popular at all. I remember the times like when Pat Patron was kind of discovered as a really good deck. Big Game Hunters were an inclusion just to battle against those pesky handlocks. But at the, at the same time, it's the the deck is losing a lot of hit, a lot of his effectiveness at the same time. And I'm just wondering what did Life Coach cut for the Big Game Hunter? 
Right, so there are some flexible spots. For one of them, um, players are starting to decide whether or not they want to include like two shield blocks or a shield slam and, mm -hmm. or even loot hoarders, for example. I think, I, I know Pavel likes to run loot hoarders in his uh, patron warrior, so those are always interesting choices. Um, Life Coach, of course, here, he's choosing to run the big game hunter so he's better against handlock, but and as a result, what, what is it good against to get this matchup? Not really, yeah. Not really. It's only about, uh, only about floating berserkers, but, but when there's a floating berserker on board, you're usually dead. And <laughs> look at Nerea's face. He was like, what the Big hell is runner. happening? Yeah, I was like, I wasn't really <laughs> expecting this. Oh, wait, wait, maybe now you, his, he would be thinking maybe there's like a control warrior of battle rages? No, there's no way. There's no way. I mean, I, and there's no way an Irie is going to ignore this. This is one of the primary win conditions that you can find in this mirror match. Life Coach will have to kill off one of these patrons, but find out a way to deal with two of them. And that's going to be tough. He doesn't even have a weapon. Yeah, he's missing that crucial tool to deal with the patrons. That's really awkward. Yeah, now, now wasn't one thing that you have to consider is that almost anything you play copies more patrons outside of the patron itself. I think you should just go for your own patrons, right, in this, yeah. in this situation. There is a possibility that you can just play your own patron and copy patrons and hopefully let your opponent deal with it. But this is a really tough spot for Life Coach. He, he would have loved to have that brawl instead of the big game hunter, right? Sure, but you can't, you know, you can't really be that picky because in the end you chose to put the big game hunter in. Yep, of course. And ultimately, the Brawl is not always as useful versus Big Game Hunter. At least it's still a 4-2 minion that you can challenge sometimes. Mm -hmm. That's true, uh, but it easy, easily dies against Patron Dex usually because when there's a Wayland turn, usually it's 2 damage. So, yeah, but enough of that. The card is already played and... Oh, oh that's a fire that's, a good pick that's pretty yeah. huge. It is, but at the same time, you. You just played a 2-4 minion, which dies to the patron and spawns more patrons, but it leaves the patron of. at 1 HP. Yeah, exactly. Like, the whole point is that the patron still is killable by the weapon, and then one whirlwind kills off the remaining patrons. Mm -hmm. So, Life Coach feels like he's effectively cleared, although there's more patrons where that came from. And the damage is yeah. just piling on. You'll be lower and lower, yeah. and your opponent knows that you use two battle rages, so there's no need to just not de deal the damage, right? What stops Nyria from playing a second Grim Patron from hand, trading into the 2-4 with the 5-1, and then just whirlwinding again? Well, he might still think maybe Life Coach will have to brawl because he's playing Big Game Hunter. Why not brawl? Right? Because you only can fit usually one in, right? Like, how do you feel fit both in? Well, if he drops the Shield Slam and one Shield Bash, Shield, uh, shield, um, shield Block, then maybe he has like two spots. True that. that. They are kind of defensive, so they achieve the same thing apart from the sighthand card with the shield block, right? I like going for the aggressive plan, uh, generally speaking, but Nyria chooses to go for Warsong Commander Synergies instead. Mm -hmm. And so he's going to use both Whirlwinds to clear. This is a damage. lot of damage too, right? This is yeah, it is. 12 damage. Does he have enough time? Oh, I'm no. not sure. Oh, he missed uh -oh. some. Thinking a little bit too long, and this is one of the traps of Patron. He only got... He missed one. Oh, he missed one. No, he, no, missed, he missed two. two because this one's supposed to copy. That's a rocky turn. Uh-oh. Six damage missed, so he would be at 13 damage mark. Okay, so what is uh, Life Coach at the threshold where there's too many Patrons and he can actually like load up on it? Like slam it one and then... Well, he can slam one. There are two patrons right. still with full health. A whirlwind doesn't actually copy any patrons. Yes. So he can play. Oh, he can't whirlwind though. I mean, oh, sorry. He can't whirlwind and play patron. Yep. Well, that's kind of sad. Interesting. <laughs> it's kind of sad, sad to watch because you're in a really desperate position. I mean, in the end. Another 3-1 patient versus a 3-3 patient didn't really make a difference. In fact, it helped you, so that way you can load the board and Whirlwind can kill off mm -hmm. four minions. Inner Rage. Interesting. Yep. So then Inner Rage, so that way he kills he that off. Arrow, yeah. And then uh, it can't copy. So in this case, Nairia's board is full. And you know what? That extra HP might make a difference if Life Coach survives by six or more, <laughs> because uh, he would be at an unreasonable amount of... Or, or, a very reasonable amount of health after this turn versus if he took the six extra damage, he'd be at 11. Yes, that's, that's, very, a, that's scary. a very big difference. Very scary. 
Now Naria has to... Well, that's a good draw. I, I would just want to say he's kind of missing a big threat on the board. That, let's say, Floating Berserker would be nice, very nice this turn. Uh, but he picked up the Emperor. Hmm. I was thinking you go for the Emperor Execute, because the Executes are not having that much value in this matchup. Yes and no. I mean, in this case, Execute also gives you some pretty decisive board control here. Um, Emperor by itself turn. also reduced Grim Patient and Warsong, which I think he maybe, he just wants better options. Hmm. I was just thinking maybe you should sacrifice one of the patrons because it has already done a lot of things, right? And just drop the Emperor because you know your opponent yeah. will have a hard time figuring out how to deal with that. It's true. But patron itself is also a resource card too, right? So like maybe he's just counting threats, like I'm removing his threats, uh, I'm making sure that I keep my threat on the board. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Speaking of Life Coach's, uh, or speaking of Emperor Thoris, and Life Coach also gets his, but well, you know, how does this actually... Life Coach knows that Nairia has nothing to multiply the patrons. Because he would have used that this, this turn, right? He would have used like a Taskmaster, he would have used like yeah, Inner Rage. It's true. So there's no, no, no tool to multiply the patrons. So he can go with his own Emperor and just armor up and just wait one turn to see maybe he will draw a Warsong Commander. Maybe he'll draw a Whirlwind Effect, a Inner Rage, yeah. or, or maybe Death Spike, right? Yeah, and. You know, in a way, he has that ridiculous opportunity to maybe Grim Patron on Stable Cool and, and just almost Smith also. Yeah, redu like just gain a bunch of armor, control the state of the board, and overwhelm his opponent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Whoa, hold on. How, how much damage can he do? Damage. That's a lot of potential damage because of the first Protein Berserker draw, because now he's able to squeeze for eight mana three crucial cards, which are Wilson Commander allowing the Protein Berserker to have charge, and the same goes for the Patrons, which can be multiplied. And. In the same, at the same time, they can just pile on the damage on the Frozen Berserker. Okay, so that should, that's like, that's basically enough to lethal his opponent if that's the case. Life Coach has to evaluate what he wants to do here. He draws to execute, that allows him to clear the board. Um, he can play the Ghoul, the Patrons, the Armor Smith, and the Execute at the same time. I think you should Yeah, I mean, at it. that point, Emperor Thorson doesn't provide too much value, so you don't even really mind trading it here in a yeah. sense. You do miss the fact that it can't like be aggressive and attack phase because as much as this game might stall out, uh, you have to figure out a way to win. And right now, it doesn't look very clear for life coaches. His opponent's almost at full health, and you have to you have to have like multiple turns to win versus your opponent is one turn away from winning. And also, you know, kind of not talking about one interesting aspect of this game. Life coach has no more card draw. He only has cyclone. So true. there's no way of replenishing the the, the hand size after this turn. Okay. So does he does he trade with the Thorson? I mean, it's just very hard to assume that your opponent can't kill you if that's the case. And plus, it's more minions on board. It was very very, very interesting to not yeah. to trade the unstable bull, right? Yeah, but uh, he can't because he doesn't have charge. Oh yeah, right. What yeah. I'm but about. now yeah. I think this is this should should this be lethal? Because the Armorsmith gained life, but it creates more patrons and yeah, it's, it's I feel like it should lethal. be lethal. Yeah, I'm, I'm just doing some uh, eyeball math. With, especially with the fact that Armor Smith can also bump in here and uh, create more patience itself. It doesn't gain you enough armor versus uh, stopping up damage. Yeah, that's probably Berserker is going to hit for a lot. That's one point. And even the Armor Smith basically has two attack here because it attacks into a minion and it gives the Fortin Berserker plus two. So you know, Armor Smith basically a 2 4 attack minion. That's right. So uh, Nairia is going to go for a big amount of damage here. Every single patron just copies more patrons. In fact, uh, there's no more highlighted mi uh, minions on his screen, which, which means effectively Life Coach is dead. So that's going to be yep. uh, game number three in the books, despite the fact that Nairia missed a few damage points here and there. He missed six damage. Yeah, that's oh, a pretty big deal. But, but it wouldn't make a difference with this turn anyway. No, because he's going to overkill him by a lot. I mean, it's still going on, but it's going to be enough to wrap up the game. So. Uh, very strong advantage going into game number four. Nairia is only has to win with the Warlock. Yeah, only with the Warlock, and we still don't know what kind of deck it is. It's, it might be Handlock, it might be Demon Handlock, it might be Maligo's Warlock. So there are a few options, or it might be Zoo. Who knows? It's unlikely to be Zoo, but mm -hmm. you're, you're absolutely right. It could be Zoo. It, I mean, it could be a lot of things. However, I'm favoring Handlock. With a with a nod to the to the dragon warlock. 
That's my that's my mm-hmm. assumption. Mm-hmm. I would go for the Malak as well. I would just like to see it, you know? And I would like to see that Neria was preparing against Life Coach, because that would be definitely the, the way of saying yeah. that, right? Uh, but he's he's on the lead. He has two wins already, so he's really close to sealing the yeah. very important first match. I think this, this is one of the most important matches, because if you fall down to the lower bracket, you're kind of feeling uneasy. So I'm only one loss away from being out of the tournament, being out of the biggest tournament of the year. I really want to go to BlizzCon and I want to be a European Championship, a European Champion at the same time. And that's just, you know, not possible when you lose the second game. I mean, you have to win two games either way, no matter what you do. So if you, if you lose your first game, you still have to win two games. Mm-hmm. If you win your first game, you still could lose and get eliminated. So uh, ultimately, you have to still be stay positive no matter what you do. And of course, uh, you, you guys should also stay positive by joining the conversation. You know, hashtag RTB 2015. Let us know what you guys think about what's going on here. You can tweet at Play Hearthstone. Send your favorite pictures of pack openings or some cool board states or just what you think about the matches overall. We're having a good time. Hope you guys are doing too. Now that's two mirror matches that Nevria has won. He's won the Druid versus Druid. Mm-hmm. He's won the Warrior versus Warrior. But there is no more Mirror matches to be had. Life Coach has to kill this Warlock with both Hunter and the Warrior. And it's going to be tough because uh, Warrior is at a disadvantage against Warlock, generally speaking. Assuming it's Handlock. It's the deck that we think it is. But he has the Big Game Hunter in his deck. And that can be a lot of, you know, different scenarios for for. for it's true. Oh, look at that. He's, I just wanted to say that maybe Life Coach should start with the Hunter because it's naturally... Ad, uh, with an, uh, is, uh, Hunter has a natural advantage over Handlock because of the hero powers or they work, right? And he would get more, more information about the Warlock in the first place. I like this though, to be honest. I, I like the, the Warrior playing here because he hasn't revealed Hunter. Mm-hmm. So he won't shoot, reveal cards to his next opponent. And the fact that he has to win with Warrior anyways. Okay. So why not just go in the order that allows you to play best to your series advantage for both this one and the next one? Okay, that's a good point. I mean, both are valid, I would say. The, the Using the Hunter right now will be like saying, I really want to win this match because it gives me more options to play around in the next, uh, next game. But your, your, uh, your point of view is also advantageous. So, yep. Yeah, I think for his following opponent, which uh, we'll end up seeing, it's going to be a really tough climb. Maria has two threats. The Void Caller and the Twilight Drake. Usually the Void Caller is always a, a gamble. It's very hard to predict. Oh man, third threat. Wow. It's hard to predict what will come out of the vo- end of the Void Caller, but even Drax is really good pressure. You just have a minion on board smacking away at everything. Mm-hmm. It's That's, difficult to deal with. It's very, very difficult to deal with. And uh, usually how the patro- patron works in, uh, in this particular matchup, he changes like the patron deck changes a lot of its usual game style because your patrons are not your win condition anymore they are dying to hellfire they're dying to shadow flame so usually if you use patrons it's only to clear the board for your opponent minions and just you know just just as a trade tool and if you want to kill your opponent and win the game it's usually only done with the floating berserker and worsen commander like a really big turn with three whirlwinds and this is how, how you usually um, win this matchup. Handlock's gonna just do handlock stuff and, and life tap, draw cards, really build up that big hand so he can drop minions really cheaply. You can see that Mountain Giant uh, eventually gonna be dropped too to threaten your opponent, but hopefully for Life Coach he picks up the big game hunter. That would be really sweet. But Nairia still has many more threats, like so even if one gets dealt with, or even two, can he stop the third threat? And that's ultimately what really breaks the, the warrior's back. It's not the fact that there's one threat, it's the fact that there's continuous threats, chaining and chaining and putting too much pressure and you die. No, that's, well, when you think about it, the Mountain Giant is eight damage for four mana. That's quite efficient. It's very efficient, considering that it's also gonna bait out the cards like the executes. And usually with, they pair up with a minion or a damage source, like a weapon, so it's always more than not just one card. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Life Coach chooses to play the Unstable Goal instead of Armor Up here, Lothar. What, what, what's he thinking? Well, first of all, Battle Rages, right? You don't want to have armor when uh, you will be maybe trading with your, if you draw weapons. And also he wants to have a little, at least something on the board just to have 
uh, like a possibility to maybe spawn the patrons before, um, like you know, just on turn five, if it that feels like the only way to win, to be super aggressive and not care about the chance of your opponent having a board clear. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can definitely see that. Yeah, I like that he's also doing it preemptively to sneak in a little bit of damage. Um, every little point of damage right might really matter against Handlock, considering that uh, you generally don't need to go for the huge damage to win the game. Sometimes, because you see that Handlock is reducing its own life in order to draw cards, mm -hmm. it's helping you kill him, ultimately. Yeah, of course. So maybe one Frothing Berserker is all you need. It, usually one Frothing Berserker is enough, but the problem is your opponent is not on low, on, low on health. The problem is that there are a lot of taunts with big, big amount big of health. Big taunted minions, yeah. right. And you have to go for that. If you use your executes on minions that are threatening you but are not kind of closing the gap to you close uh, to, to for you to finish the game then you have a hard time dealing with that those, those pesky minions that build the wall okay well uh, Nairia has interesting choices here generally speaking you want to play the twilight drake so that way you can life tap the following turn yep. and then play a mountain giant for three uh, however at the same time, you have to evaluate, like Voidcaller, for example, is not bad when you have demons to back it up, but it does die to the death bite, so you have to always be very cautious about it. I mean, he's not having any taunt givers yet. The Draxus is very cool if you can just drop a Defender of Argus on it and just, you know, <laughs> let's say soak 15 damage points. Yeah. And that would be really impressive because uh, you kind of bait out the execute early on. If there's no execute, you just, you just steal the game. Because you deal a lot of damage, Patron uh, is not able to develop the board, and yeah. Well, Life Coach has an opportunity to cash in that Unstable Ghoul. If he plays the Grim Patron, it's as if he has a Whirlwind effect. And mm -hmm. then he summons four Patrons onto the board. However, he's very weak to Hellfire. His opponent doesn't have it. It's a risk. As he choose instead to go for Death Spite and give up his Unstable Ghoul. It's hard. These are really hard questions to evaluate. And he goes for the patron. Yeah, I really like that. This is the thing I was talking about when you asked me about the unstable goal on turn two, right? This is the thing you have to do if you want to play an unfavorable matchup. Okay, so he immediately cashes in two. He's gonna say, "Fine, you can trade it in." He maybe has dark bomb, but hopefully you can't kill every patron. And there's the dark bomb, but he doesn't have the option to clear everything. He can silence one. Yeah, actually, that's that helps him deal with almost every patron. That's actually, yeah, that's true. You can just silence one, kill the, the other free yep. free with your Dark Bomb, and kill the middle one with your... Interesting. Wow. Okay. No respect for the patrons. No respect at all. So, second patron. So now you know okay. that your opponent is lacking the Shadow Flames and Hellfires, right? Right. And one thing that's really interesting, too, is that Life Coach, he's holding a second patron in hand, and that's oftentimes the key in order to kill your opponent because there used to be a train of thought that like maybe you hold every resource and go for just two frothings, kill one taunt and kill with the other frothing. Mm -hmm. But you also realize that if you just reduce the cost of one patron, one patron, one war song, one frothing berserker, oftentimes you can just have that kill and just go for an OTK opportunity. However, he, since you realize he doesn't have the Hellfire, do you go for the board flood and just kind of commit to the board? It's really hard to say. I would say you have to go super aggressively and just flood board again, you know? You, you just push your opponent to finally draw that Hellfire, and if you, if you just not, if you know we're not closing the game as soon as possible, you probably right. will lose in, in the late game anyway. Right. So you vote Whirlwind here? Yes, I do vote Whirlwind here. It's hard because your Whirlwind here is very all-in, and at the same time, if you draw into Battle Rage, it, it might get weak or two. So, I, I, actually, you do have Whirlwind number two with Despite. Oh, it's so hard to evaluate, right? Because you only have 90 seconds. And Nairia, of course, this is why he wasn't afraid, because he's got some removal options. He says if he doesn't copy it, I'll just be able to deal with it. And now this... This is the question. Do you go on for another Patron's Whoa, Charge? Oh, hold on here. Because now he can play Patron, Inner Rage it, and whirlwind. And execute the giant. But you're you're oh. aware there will be a drop from the void caller most of the time. You're right, you're right. That's actually the big problem. The void caller summons a minion. But the depth spider is also triggering after the void caller. So even 
you, you don't have to commit first. You can just drop the patron. I mean, you commit with the second second whirlwind, so you can just see what's happening, right? And you can always execute an example Malgan if it goes off. Yeah, that's, that's true. I guess you could. But this is a really tough turn. Yeah, this is this is a lot of small things where sequencing can change the entire outcome of the game. So you have to do it very carefully. The rope has showed up, though. The old nemesis of life coach. <laughs> He's got to make a choice now. Is he just going to even pass because he doesn't really feel like he's comfortable doing anything? I feel like you have to at least deal with the giant. Oh, that's that's really close when it comes to animations. You want to see what's happening. Yeah, he's going to execute. Mm. What did he end up doing? Did he equip the second death spite? He ended up just armoring up. Wow. He didn't want to equip the second death spite. What do you think about that? I don't know, because I think he was anticipating maybe Draxus or Doomguard, but Malganus comes out here, and that's so much damage and pressure onto your opponent, not to mention get free life taps. Yep. You can just... Although, well, do you want to? If he life taps, he can't play Emperor yeah. Thor soon. Yeah. And... When <laughs> that's very interesting, because you might... Nerea might be thinking, okay, Lab Coach has a second execute in his hand, or the big game hunter... No, he would have played the big game hunter, but... He has to yeah, have the second... He, he certainly would have played Big Game Hunter. Yeah, but he has to have the second executed, because why would he just do this turn, right? I don't know. Was... Maybe you have to, oh, you're overthinking it, and Life Coach just doesn't have many good options. L Armorsmith's not it. Wow. Is this the end of the match? Is Naria taking it? Well, not necessarily next turn. He still doesn't have enough damage to kill his opponent. He'll have... 14 plus 2, that's 16. Or you can hit with Draxus, that's uh, that's 17. That's still not going to be enough, but Life Coach is definitely in a pinch. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder if he feels like it's good to just, again, go for Flood and try to, like, proactively attack the board. But I, I feel like maybe he, he waited too long. If, like, yeah, that was the move last turn, right? Yeah, to Patron Flood. Yeah. And now he's, he can't really commit to any potential lethals because the Malganus has to be taken right. care of first, right? You have to kill it. And that, if you want oh, that makes so much sense. Because if Malganus didn't come out, then maybe he can go for a kill on turn 8 with patrons and other mm -hmm. things too. And now he's even forced to attack into the Emperor because he can't target the, uh, the, the opponent's right. character, right? Exactly, and hopefully uh, he has an opportunity to kill his opponent still with the inner rage and the war songs and the patrons, but Nyria is looking for a way to kill his opponent now, and he's got some really big play opportunities. Well, he, first of all, he has the Hellfire, finally, yeah. which is not that important anymore, but yeah, he has it. Now you have to just set up a really big tomb in. I mean, maybe two even. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not really seeing any lethal opportunities here. No, no, there's no way to win this game this turn. But I just think you can go for a molten giant, and defender taunt. Vargas, something protector. Yep, he would have killed Malganus last turn if he had the opportunity yeah. to, for sure. It's a high priority target removal. Mm -hmm. hey, to be honest, like, yeah, using the owl here might be even better than the something because you, you you keep one of the taunters and you definitely don't want to. Anyway. My goodness, this could be the last turn for Life Coach in the group stage matches. And Fiery War Axe is not it. How much can he actually do to stabilize with this patron? He can kill Malganus. And he can. Oh, but he has can to attack. He? No, he has to attack with two patrons. Because you can't use your hero to attack if in any of the minions. Actually, that's very cool by Nerea. That was the reason why he toned it up to Malganus instead of the Owl. Because now Life Coach is not able to swing with the axe. He would have been able to, you're right. Very cool move by Nuria here. Yeah, with so much... He's like, well, now you have to armor up before attacking, but you can't because he doesn't even have enough either. Well, even if you armor up, that's... That's, GG. that's it. Checkmate. That's it. Nyria advances to the winner's match 3-1. And despite the fact that it looked like, uh, you know, maybe there's opportunities for Life Coach to kill, Nyria holds, holds serve and was able to win the very crucial mirror matches. You know, the Druid vs. Druid, the Warrior vs. Warrior. Uh, swinging it that way, we were talking about, is a big advantage in the series. Yep, that's very true. The mirror matches are defining yep. uh, the whole match. And usually players kind of want to avoid the mirror matches. Just, you know, 
play the more convenient games because you you're not so draw dependent like you know you don't have to you don't need those exact cards as your opponents usually right i do want to point out that the only time patron won this series was against itself uh, it actually <laughs> lost every game that it wasn't playing a mirror match. So that's something interesting to take note. I know a lot of players are always thinking, well, if we're seeing a lot of the patrons and you know how does it interact, but it's very interesting to see that like Druid was able to beat it and Handlock's mm -hmm. able to beat it. So there's a lot of people who are really gunning for this deck despite its popularity. Well, on the other hand, for Druid, it was a double combo with Shade dealing, what, 32 damage. But yeah, How often does that happen? Not, not that often. You not that often. But what a match that was. And uh, Nairia is going to, um, to be the winner for, the, for this. Um, on the other hand, the, the next match is going to be Oskaka versus Thais. Um, Nairia is going to face the loser of uh, Gira vers, uh, versus Pavo. And then uh, Lafkus is going to... Yeah, 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 the, the, the winner. winner right? Yeah, Nairia is going to, to face the winner. Uh, well, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. And uh, I think we are actually ready with, uh, with Nairia, and um, let's hear his words. It's true, guys. I'm ready here with Nairia, and a really impressive match. I mean, you and Life Coach are both known for doing extremely well on ladder, but uh, you were just talking to me about some differences from playing at home, playing on ladder, and then coming to a tournament and playing here. So what's the biggest difference for you? Uh, here, I missed six damage because... Uh, be simply because at home, uh, animation takes faster. And I thought it would be enough time to do all uh, attacks, but yeah, it didn't. <laughs> yeah, you kind of have to plan for things a little bit differently here. But both you and Life Coach also really like to observe each turn, like to think everything through. In your video, you said that sometimes you see things that other players don't see. How did that help you in your mirror matchups with uh, Druid and with Warrior? Uh, Druid, mirror, always know, like, skillful. Everyone knows. So, uh, I am glad that uh, he didn't top deck Valgros, and uh, so di I didn't as well, but I had a better curve, and I won. Uh, in the Patron Mirror, it's also important to get Death Bite into Patrons, uh, but I didn't, ha I didn't have... Uh, I, I was all in when I played the Double Virulent Effect, but in my mind, it crossed. Like, if I use this, he has to use the his Virulence to clear my patrons. So whenever he did it, the only way he expands his board is Unstable Ghoul. And Unstable Ghoul is like a weakness because I can uh, exploit it. So it's like small things where like this uh, matter a lot when you consider your turns. Well, you have still a long path ahead of you on the road to BlizzCon. But I know that, like the other players, you really want to get there, but unlike some of the other players, you almost qualified last year. It was so close, and now it's within your grasp again. What is it like to be back on the stage? What is it like to have BlizzCon within reach again? Uh, there is a lot of people here. It's cool. And uh, last time, I wasn't preparing for the uh, regional so well, like this time. So, yeah. And uh, it, was my, it was my first LAN experience. So I was nervous. Right now I'm just chilling and uh, playing my best. Just chilling and playing your best. Well, I'm going to let you go relax a little bit more. Casters, I'm going to give it back to you. That's actually amazing that he is chilling and, you know, playing Hearthstone on a big stage. He was nervous before, but he's not nervous now. Lothar, is there a secret? Uh, you as a pro player, you know, it's, uh, you are also calm where, where you're playing. What, what do you do to, to calm yourself? Oh, well, many people are bringing the experience from other stuff. like. Uh, my example, that's uh, being, being a musician, a guitarist in the band, uh, have, I had the experience to be on stage before. And I think many people are actually new to this experience, so they have to deal with it like, in a new way for them. So it's very hard to find something that will keep you calm. And most of the players are just you know, usually trying to chill, to not think that they are on the stage, or trying to be like, emulating their home, something like that maybe brings something that resembles the, the setup they have at home, maybe just, you know, drink water, drink a tea or whatever that just keeps your mind at ease. Maybe the fact that we're in a tavern is also helping friendly agree. Maybe. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe it's, you know, really calming. It's not as, like, super intense. For example, on the other side, <laughs> you know, 15 <laughs> feet from us, or, sorry, <clears throat> you know, 15 meters from us, where, let's use the imperial system, or let's but use the metric system, what it same. is, right? 15 feet and 15 ah, meters. okay, well, 15 
seven <laughs> meters, okay? Seven <laughs> meters from us is a giant, beautiful hero stage. Now, that thing is really intimidating because it's open platform, there's lights, cameras everywhere, you know, laser beams, pew, 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 pew. But here, it's more like, you know, cozy. You can see, like, the woodwork, and you're sitting right across from your opponent, and it's a very familiar sight, you know? Uh, maybe you get nervous, but at the same time, everyone's very welcoming to how things are. I think all the nerves comes from internal. You know, it's everything that you put pressure on yourself. You see guys like Life Coach and Nairia, they're kind of used to it, but some players like Jiro, who haven't really had this opportunity, maybe he puts pressure back on himself because he's like, this is my time to shine. I need to perform well, but sometimes that ends up making you perform worse. Yeah. Um, so my recommendation is just pretend you're at home. Uh, try to get a little bit comfortable. Some players even take their shoes off because they're trying to get in that zone. Uh, you know, if, if, you didn't, if you didn't exactly bring the cleanest socks, don't do that. But, you know, generally speaking, do whatever it takes for you to get in the, zone. Know, the inner garden. The yes. zone. Yeah, that's the right. The zone, yeah. The zone is a better word for it. All right. We also have a wonderful audience just uh, helping us and uh, cheering for the players. So, like, for some people, it's actually empowering when you play and when you have audience cheering. Uh, do you, are you guys getting stressed by audience, by the way? No, no, not at all, man. In fact, the audience is great. Uh, they're they're cheering for the matches. They're kind of enjoying how things swing. Um, you know, and in fact, right now up. they, they right. won't let Life Coach leave. In fact, he has to play another match, guys, in a little bit. But they're they're lining up with their signs, like please sign it. You know, like oh, I have a rope, please rope me. And it's like no, guys, like just <laughs> let let him get to his match. He's he's just trying. He's just a you know a German family man trying to get back through. But at the same time, you have to appreciate the passion of the fans. They really love Life Coach, and you know the, the guy's like a walking legend in Hearthstone right now because uh, of his accomplishments. But all these players are also continuing to build that. Right? He's he's definitely one of the the role models that a lot of players mm -hmm. look up after. Yeah, definitely. And that can that can be also seen in our inner circles and the team circles. I see that the younger players like Thais and Ario are looking up to the older ones in the team, and that's For really sure. cool to see. Yeah, um, I, I've been having a lot of fun here, and I, I'm looking forward to our next match, Mitch. Yeah, absolutely. The next match is Skaka versus Thais. And uh, Tyson versus Maverick, three to one, a backstage. They're going to line up for the next match in just a moment. And the winner of that match is actually going to be the first person who advances to the top four, and it will be qualified Ooh. for the World Championship. Yeah. Right. Hype. Time to find out who's going to be our first BlizzCon finalist from Europe. Absolutely. So, guys, stay tuned. We are going to have a short break right now, and then we are going to have 